Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time. I am Siddharth Vardarajan and joining me today to discuss India-China relations is the well-known Chinese Indologist and a familiar face for those of us who track India-China relations, Professor Ma Ali uh, of the China Reform Forum, uh, a think tank in Peking. Welcome to Rajya Sabha TV, sir. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, you recently took part in the uh, World Conference on Indology that was organized at Rashtrapati Bhavan in Delhi, uh, an event which brought together Indologists from around the world and yourself and other Chinese scholars as well. Uh, tell us something about the state of Indology in China. What, what's the level uh, of interest among uh, Chinese students and Chinese academics in uh, Indology as a field of study? Uh, first of all, I would thank the organizer of this conference, uh, ICCR. Uh, it's first uh, uh, international conference of uh, Indologist uh, since uh, in the, in the independent. Exactly. Oh, so so uh, I'm uh, very excited about this conference. So many Indologists uh, came to uh, Delhi, some of them from uh, in, in India in other cities, and some of them from the, some other countries, like China. We sent uh, three delegates to participate conference. It's a good conference. I think it gave us a very uh, good opportunity to discuss how to promote the uh, Indian Indology in China. Just now you mentioned about uh, China's state of Indology. In, in I think uh, the development of Indology uh, in China is developing very good, very fast. During the uh, 50s, there were only few s scholars, few s uh, professors uh, uh, engaged in, in, in Indologies. But recent years, you can find more and more scholars are engaging in the Indology. And more and more young students are interested in, in, in Indologies, some of them uh, uh, learn Indian language, Indian culture. I have a, a good friend. She can dance Indian. She can dance Indian dance. The classical dance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the classical dance. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I have many uh, colleagues who are engaging in research in intelligence. I take. I think maybe the main reason is that India is our close neighbor. Uh, to, uh, we take India as a close neighbor, as a uh, big country, big power. It's a rising power. It's a developing country. And uh, it's an active uh, player in multi uh, arena. So we attach a very high importance to India. Studies, right? Yeah, and uh, is the is the interest that young people uh, or younger academicians, young students show um, primarily in language and philosophy, or is the interest in India more uh, in India as a modern country with with the IT, both, IT, both, and all these both, things? Okay. Both, both. Some young scholars uh, are interested in Indian class, classical culture. Uh, they are interested in Indian dance, right. Indian uh, architect architecture, and s but most uh, young people are like uh, uh, in, uh, study in modern India, especially contempt contemporary right, India. Of course, yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, uh, because India is a developing kind country. But this developing country is developed very, is developing very quickly, very fast. As, as I know, this year, India may be the uh, quickest developing country. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I also had a chance to interview uh, Professor Marietta Stepanyans, Russian scholar, uh, scholar from the Russian Federation, uh, and we discussed the evolution of Indology in Russia and the former Soviet Union. And she made an interesting point about how 
the approach of Russian scholars to Indian philosophy and Indian thought in the Soviet period was, uh, of course, influenced heavily by uh, Marxism, Leninism, the materialist conception of history in which ideas are related to uh, the sociological developments. Was that also uh, a factor in the evolution of Indian studies in China, a tendency to look at, at Indian thought and Indian philosophy uh, through the lens of class struggle, for example? Yeah. Uh, uh, Russia or so the Soviet Union has very good uh, intelligence uh, who engage who uh, studied Indian classical uh, philosophy and the Indian ancient thought. I think it's important. It's this phenomenon gave uh, uh, active, positive influence to China. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, China, I cannot, I cannot say now, from the 50s, even before that, some old, some uh, distinguished scholars who uh, uh, has been is, is studying Indian, ancient Indian, including uh, philosophy and history and some other things. Uh, recent years, I find especially interesting the 2000 new millennium, uh, more and more young scholar are interested in Indian philosophy and uh, in the ancient thought. Right. You can find many uh, wisdom. This wisdom can guide our behavior, can guide our uh, activities, and uh, can guide international relations. This, this conference, during this conference, I prepared a paper. The title is that Panja, Panjashila. As the, pan, the topic is that Pandashila, philosophical thought of ancient India, become basic norm of contemporary international relations. Right. It means ancient Indian thought, ancient Indian philosophy can be uh, norms, can be guidance to contemporary. India societies, including domestic society and even international community. Right. The uh, evolution of the Panchashila concept mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the modern period, thanks to Pandit Nehru, uh, and of course his interaction with Chinese leaders, uh, was this uh, a easy concept for the Chinese side to embrace and to accept as, as a guiding yeah, principle? Uh, for I think it's, it's easy for Chinese yeah. people to understand that five principles, uh, but uh, it describes this uh, Panchashila as the five principles of peaceful coexistence. But if in, uh, in the circle of uh, indology, uh, Arab scholars can understand Panchashila. Right, right. And uh, the study of indology in China, Indian, particularly philosophy, religion, languages, how did it suffer? What was its fate during the Cultural Revolution, when a lot of there was a lot of disruption to normal intellectual life? But in particular, there was uh, a very negative view taken of of philosophy and religion. Yeah, uh, during the uh, Cultural Revolution, many cultures, especially Chinese traditional uh, culture, yeah. was destroyed. But fortunately. Recent years, especially uh, from the 70s, the late of 70s, the more and more uh, uh, cultural, in, how to say, uh, get a new momentum. Uh, I think this momentum gave us uh, a very big power. Uh. Right. And uh, how much of the uh, interest in India and Indology in China is uh, influenced by the curiosity in, ch in China of Buddhist uh, philosophy, Buddhism uh, as a religion or as a way of life? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, other words, in other words, how important is uh, Buddhist studies or, 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 or Buddhist philosophy? If uh, you, you mentioned uh, Buddhist studies, uh, I think the number of uh, scholars 
maybe much, uh, much bigger than the uh, we so-called indulgences. Uh, uh, in China, we call indulgences mainly uh, focus on Indian culture, Indian uh, uh, history, uh, philosophy. Not only Buddhist, Bud Buddhism. Yeah, many, many, many things. Uh, but uh, academically speaking, yeah, we uh, don't take them as a, uh, how to say, indulgence. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so Buddhist <laughs> studies is a separate field of study in a way in China. Yeah. Uh, uh, generally speaking, maybe included it. Right. But uh, according to uh, uh, my understanding, yes. uh, is another the, the independent uh, field. Right. Although they are uh, very close, they are, have very close relations with uh, Indian studies. Right. But of course, this is one area where there could be a lot of collaboration. Yeah, between, yeah right, uh, right. Indi Indian yeah. and Chinese scholars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, some scholars who are uh, studying in this relationship, in, in, in interactions. Yeah. Right. Uh, if we were to move away from Indology and, of course, look at the wider uh, India-China relationship uh, and take advantage of, uh -huh. of your um, role as an, as an observer of the bilateral relationship for the last 30, 40 years. Um, you, you, uh, you wrote an important article uh, soon after the uh, Indian elections last year mm -hmm. uh, in which you uh, tried to analyze mm -hmm. what the uh, impact on India-China relations would be of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi coming to power. And uh, there were two points you made which I remember. Mm -hmm. one, oh. one you said that uh, uh, Mr. Modi's focus on uh, economic uh, growth and development is something which would uh, create a very healthy basis for India-China uh, relations to develop. And secondly, you looked at the recent political history mm -hmm. of the relationship. And you said when uh, BJP was last in power under uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, mm -hmm. uh, India-China relations uh, also made some dramatic progress. Yeah, you're right. uh, the uh, special representatives mm -hmm. for resolution of the boundary issue, that mechanism was started. Mm -hmm. So it's been 18 months now, eight, 19 months, since uh, the Modi government has come to power. How do you assess the state of uh, India-China relations? I think during the last uh, 30 years, the relations between these two countries had witnessed uh, great progress. I think it's a, uh, it's a good, a very good thing for, from uh, our, uh, our view. Uh, maybe Indian people, Indian government uh, uh, appreciate the, this progress. I think uh, after Rajiv Gandhi's visit, our relationship has been uh, improved greatly. After that, uh, till the last year, I think has many uh, development. Uh, and uh, latest development is after uh, Modi take his post. I th uh, uh, when he take his post, I immediately write an uh, article and uh, interviewed with some uh, uh, media. I think this is a good thing for both country. I think all this uh, target is developing uh, India's economy. Uh, it uh, gave us a very uh, strong base for furthering, for enhancing our uh, economic relationship. I think during last uh, years, uh, pre President Xi's visit, both the country decided to build uh, many uh, industrial corridors, uh, yeah. corridors yeah. Uh, industrial zones, park, industrial parks, that's uh, right, yeah. and uh, some other things. I think uh, it's important. Uh, uh, this simple, uh, simple. Uh, I hope the economic relationship will be more closer. Both governments declared that we should have more closer economic partnership. It means both sides should uh, lower uh, investment. Uh, both sides should, uh, uh, how to say, uh, promote trade. 
and uh, some and balanced other. balanced trade actually yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Trade, trade that is is yes. uh, is is important but it's uh, the analysis we should at least you should enhance our bilateral economic relations and trade. Uh, uh, meanwhile, you should deal with uh, deficit. Yeah, you should import more Indian goods into Chinese government. Yeah, I think this is the economic field's development. Right. About the political uh, relationship, I th uh, China and India, I think both government, both top leaders, has decided both countries should, China and India, should have more close political relationship. It's important because we are a close neighbor. We are a developing country. We are a positive player in multi-arena, the international community. We can cooperate uh, uh, in many things like BRICS, like uh, China, India, and Russia uh, uh, cooperation. The and uh, uh, trilateral uh, uh, cooperation. Yeah. I think it's a um, new phenomenon, but it's a good phenomenon. Right. Yeah. Now, Professor Ma, if, if we look at <laughs> the, uh, the point you just made, right, the need for political, improving political relations, it seems to me that in India, there is no disagreement about that. Mm. I think barring some people who um, subscribe to the China threat theory and are very worried about this, the vast consensus in this country is that even if India and China are competitors, even if India and China, even if China is a challenge or, the, or the, there is a security challenge, mm. but India and China need to work together. Mm. Uh, is the same the case in China? And the reason I'm asking you uh, is because when President Xi was visiting uh, India, we had that unfortunate incident of the presence of Chinese soldiers in, a, uh, uh, in the Ladakh area, which led to some tension. What's the reason for, uh, and in fact, during many visits, uh, these kinds of incidents happen, which suggests that maybe on the Chinese side, there are elements who don't want relations to improve? Would that be a correct well, assessment? I can tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh, Chinese leaders want to have a good political relationships, uh, relationships with, with India. It's our uh, political, strong political intention, political decision. Uh, but uh, of course, we must recognize there are some uh, trouble, troublesome problem like the boundary dispute. And I think both government do not would not to see that phen that phenomenon, that event. Uh, both government has uh, uh, decided we should keep the peace, tranquility along the line of actual control. It's important. Although the uh, boundary dispute has not been uh, resolved, but we must seek how to resolve, finally final resolve this uh, problem. Uh, before that, you should uh, put forward the uh, special representative dialogue, and we at least we should seek uh, search for a framework of final uh, settlement. Uh, before that, we should keep the peace and tranquility. Maybe uh, as a soldier. They cannot understand the top leader's thinking. I, th I think so, maybe. Uh, uh, so uh, we can, uh, we have dealt with uh, such, such things. Uh, during the Modi's visit, no, no such yes, conflict. That's right. Why? Both government managed and controlled. So they sent a message uh, all the way down. Yeah, uh, the central government sent a message to the, the, the military field. Right. Yeah, it's uh, important. Yes. I think uh, this thing is a bad thing, but it's not a big thing right. for both countries. Uh, really. Now, 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 when the special representatives mechanism was created, there was a lot of optimism that we could move quickly mm. towards finding a solution. Mm. And the first few years, indeed, the two sides made very quick progress. 
they reached uh, an understanding on the agreed principles and parameters of what a settlement could look like. But since then, it's been four or five years, progress has slowed down. <laughs> what's, what's the reason for this? Why have we, why have we slowed down again? Yeah. Uh, I know people help boundary disputes can be uh, uh, set down immediately, at least as soon as possible. But it's very difficult, I, I, frankly speaking. Yes. Yeah, it's very uh, difficult and very sensitive. It will depend both sides' efforts, both sides' efforts. We should take, uh, we sh should respect the history and uh, uh, modern uh, north, uh, uh, present, present situation, and we should respect both people's feelings. Indian people have some feeling, and Chinese people have some feeling. And you have some demand, you have some demand. Maybe we can follow the principle that one is uh, Panchasila, and another one is uh, uh, mutual understanding and mutual adjustment or uh, mutual accommodation. Although Indian do not want to uh, accept the term of mutual accommodation, accommodation. but at least you should make the meaningful adjustment. Right. Um, if you look at the wider security situation in Asia, it seems as if Chinese, uh, the Chinese are, the Chinese territorial disputes with uh, many of its neighbors seems to be sharpening at this time. Your relations with Japan uh, at the, in the political arena are not very good. South China Sea, uh, issue has again escalated. Uh, what's the reason for all of these issues becoming sharper right now? Is it a conscious policy by the Chinese side? Uh, a product of, of China's confidence or? I think this issue is very, how to say, very sensitive. Frankly speaking, if no Americans role in this region, the situation, secure situation, political situation, is not like, like now. After the United States states that we back, return, return to the Asian Pacific. Yeah, the pivot, yeah. yeah, yeah pivot. Yeah. Before that, the situation has some uh, difficulties, but after that, the situation has some trouble. But some Asian countries would look at, would welcome the return of the U.S. to uh, the Asia Pacific <laughs> region. Japan, for example, even ROK, and even uh, the uh, Indian government has deepened its, its strategic partnership with the U.S. Do you, do you, are you worried by uh, I don't worry this idea about of... Uh, India, uh, United States is a superpower. Uh, 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 only superpower. Every country want to improve its relations with this, this big superpower. There are, been, there, are, uh, it's, there are so many reasons for, for India and for uh, some other countries, like Iran and uh, North Korea. They want to improve the relations with America. Yes. No, 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 no problem, no doubt from China side. Yes. I, I believe, I do believe, India has followed the independent foreign policy. Right. Uh, India cannot, how to say, tilt with uh, America. Uh, although some American strategists want to lure India to uh, go closer to America. But I believe India can follow, uh, when India well followed, uh, of good independent, good, independent, independent foreign policy independent and, foreign and good relations yeah. with all yeah, powers. Yeah. Uh, my last question before we wrap up. Uh, climate change is supposed to be one of those areas mm -hmm. where India and China mm -hmm. can collaborate. The Chinese have made great progress in some of the clean technology, uh, particularly solar. Do you think this is an area where the two countries should intensify their cooperation? Yeah, uh, sure. I think we should intensify it, we should uh, improve our uh, strengthen our cooperation on climate uh, change. Right. It's uh, important for who, uh, for who human being, being, for who earth. We, China and the India as a developing country, we have very, uh, we have many uh, common language, co common language on this issue. Right. You can cooperate closely. Right. Uh, Professor Marjali, thank you very much for joining us on Rajasabha TV.
Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. That brings to an end this episode of IST. Do join me again next week with another guest. Thank you for watching. Thank you.